Hello, John Cole once again. How are you? Well, firstly, we want to talk about the ceasefires in Northern Ireland. Are they going to hold out? That is the million dollar question. Right, we have Jerry Fitt here. Jerry Fitt, what about the question of decommissioning weapons? Who do you think should be in charge of that? Well, uh, I'm sure Colonel Gaddafi would give you a few bob for the weapons after all. That's where they came from. Uh, on a sale return basis, of course, like. Well, Ian Paisley, uh, what do you think should uh, happen here? How do you think the handling of the weapons should be dealt with? Well, I think they should take all their weapons, the paramilitaries, that is, to the local auction to see who would buy the weapons back again, then you would know who's going to start the fucking war again. Handing in its weapons is not the only answer. I mean, let me tell you this here. Everybody wants the IRA to hand in their weapons. So what do they do? Hand them in. Sure, they'll just go and make more, and then, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we'll be back to square one. What you need to do is take their arms and their fucking hands off them to prevent this happening again. Right, well, we do have the Sinn Féin president in Jerry Adams. Jerry Adams, what do you say about that? Well, um, let me tell you now. I think that uh, is a bit ridiculous. Um, wanting to take the IRA weapons and their hands off them is going a bit far. Well, there's no need for you to worry about your hands, Mr. Adams. You couldn't make the fucking bed in the mornings, never mind an armalite. Right now, Dr. Pizzi, tone it down. Let's go to John Hume. John Hume, have you any uh, suggestions for this decommissioning of weapons? Well, we want to bring both traditions together on this issue. So I think we should load up a massive cargo boat, take all the weapons and explosives into the middle of the Irish Sea and dump them all there, and then we can forget about the whole issue. And then the IRA's scuba diving squad enters the Irish Sea to retrieve them again. Do you think I come up the fucking lagging in a bubble, Mr. G, for God's sake? You'd certainly have no problems floating, Mr. Paisley, that's for sure. Uh, now, Mr. Hume, talk back to me like that again, and I'll hit you that many times you'll swear you're surrounded and I'll knock your bollocks and... Um, hold on a minute. Could I possibly make a suggestion here? Fuck, wait you hear this here? The bearded brother of Beelzy Bob with a rough Harris look-alike has something to say. Actually, I was told I look more like Sylvester Stallone. So this or the fucking cat more like it, Adams. Get on with it. Right now, Jerry Adams, what was your suggestion there? Well, I think we need, or we should keep all our weapons. Then that way no one is arguing about what to do with them. If we hold on to them, then there's no argument. Well, I don't know whether that's a valid point or not, but uh, Sir Patrick Mayhew, the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, is in with us tonight. Sir Patrick Mayhew, what do you suggest is the way forward on this issue? Well, may I say that uh, all the paramilitary weapons should be handed over to be destroyed by means of which everyone uh, should be satisfied. And uh, that would mean, therefore, that we have uh, continued uh, peaceful dialogue and uh, without the threat of someone getting around in the fucking head uh, for disagreeing with the other. So that is what I think we should do, is decommission the weapons and therefore we can move forward uh, as soon as we possibly can in the interest of everyone. Right, well, Jerry Fitt, would you be happy with that? Well, so long as I don't have to give up my personal weapon, because, I mean, I do have one. Let me tell you this here, Mr. Fitt. You wouldn't know if your gun fired bullets or hard peas for fuck's sake. I'd think no matter what it fires, you'd still miss anyway with eyes like that. Well, if the target was as big as you, Mr. Pease, you'd do it very much at fucking miss. Right, I'll slap your fucking face, don't you? I mean, if you did only carry an army, you'd be fucked like a stick about your bollocks. Now, hold on, gentlemen. Give it all right, Mr. Adams. You think you're running the fucking show here, but you're not. Hey, will that talk back to me like that again? Right, you per give it over, for goodness sake. Right, uh, Dr. Paisley, getting slightly off the subject, I seen your daughter Rhonda yesterday, just as a matter of interest, how is her painting coming along? Well, I don't uh, think that's anything to do with what, what we're talking about. Uh, uh, well, let me tell you this, her paintings are not coming along. Frankly, Mr. Cole, I have a dog named Bishop, and his turds have more artistic merit than Rhonda's paintings. Oh, I see. I take it you called your dog Bishop for religious reasons, is that right? Uh, not at all, Mr. Cole, it's because he once fucked a bitch and it took us years to find out that he was the father, so that's why uh, uh, he was called Bishop. Oh, well, I see, right. Well, I think Casey might have been a better name for him, to be honest with you.
We want to talk about the boom in businesses in Northern Ireland now that we've got the uh, ceasefire. Now, we want to talk about the increase of small businesses as well, expanding in Northern Ireland since the ceasefires began. Jerry Adams, will they stay open? Well, um, I want to know why you're asking me. I don't fund them. But you fucking blow them up, don't you? Well, now, Mr Cole, I've told you time and time again that I am not a member of the IRA. Um, it's peace I want, and I will do anything to get it. Well, Mr. Adams, there's a train at 8 o'clock. Don't get on it. Get in front of it if you'll do anything for it. Well, if you stood in front of it, uh, you'd probably fucking rag it. Now, I'll stick my boot in your beardy bollocks. Don't you talk to me like that. Right, right, Dr. Paisley, give it over for God's sake. You've been in more fights than Chris Eubank. Mind you, Eubank won most of his anyway. Now, in with us tonight is the head of the IDB which, of course, is the Industrial Development Board for Northern Ireland. That, of course, is John B. McGookin. Now, John B. McGookin, should I say, yes, sorry. John B. McGookin, is there still plenty of money in the kitty for further expansion on the business front, or is it all running dry? Well, uh, th there's still a few quid left in the kitty, but uh, but uh, everybody needs to pull their weight and not their plunkers and get up with their fucking lazy beds in the morning and come down and see us, and, and, and we'll try and set them up in a business. And we don't want to hear from prostitutes, priests, or fucking Protestants. We don't want uh, anyone like that at all down to see us here, because we will not give this money away to any Tom, Dick, or Harry. Right, well, well, Jerry Adams, there's still plenty of opportunities, isn't there? Well, um, there probably is. Uh, Mr. McGugan, um, what about a workshop for making uh, fireworks? Uh, Lake Caliber, of course. Well, Mr. Adams, I, I, I don't think so. I think I think you've got more workshops and fucking corner shops, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, what we're looking for here is hard-working people who are honest and uh, who are prepared to knock their fucking ballocks in. Uh, uh, we've got no time for lazy bastards scrounging of our company, and, and we will not tolerate that. Right, well, Sir Patrick Mayhew, no doubt the ceasefires are good for small businesses all round. Would you not think so? Well, indeed, as uh, Mr. McGookin has explained, uh, Northern Ireland... Uh, Small business firms have expanded, and we want to see that trend continue, especially in areas such as uh, yeah, in most need, like the Anderson's Town, the Falls Road, uh, the Markets area, and of course the, the Pearl Gas Estate. We want to see all those areas expand and uh, therefore go forward. Hold on, you fat bastard. Has Jerry Adams got a gun to your bollocks under this table? I never heard any Protestant areas being mentioned. Now, hold on, Dr. Pizzi. These areas are earmarked. Your fucking ears are my mark. If you don't shut up, now let me speak. I am speaking to Sir Patrick. Now shut your fucking face. Right now, give it over for goodness sake. Jerry Fit. do you think the IDB are investing money into projects in the right areas? Or are Catholics still being discriminated against? Well, uh, as you know, us Catholics don't need to work. There's uh, plenty of post offices about you mean a lot of Catholics draw the dole money? No, I mean the fucking rub them. All right, see, well, Jerry Adams, is that a fair assessment? Well, um, as you know, I don't rob them. And uh, anyone who says I do rob them um, are liars. No, that's because you got some other poor bastard to go and fucking rob them for you, Mr. Adams. I think we're all stupid or what? Well, uh, I and Sinn Féin uh, strenuously deny that. Um, but I think the IDB should build a large concert hall so that we can bring all people together um, to watch and enjoy bands such as the Pogues, um, Sinead O'Connor, uh, the daughter of Des, and, uh, of course, the Cranberries. We, we want every... Oh, let me tell you this here, Mr. Adams, and let me make this abundantly clear to you. The God-fearing people of Belfast do not want an orgy of devil-worshipping and debauchery to take place in this so-called concert hall. These so-called musicians, singers and dancers spend all their time drinking, fornicating and drug-taking. Some of them have been taking so many drugs that they've been on more trips than the average Belfast city councillor for fuck's sake. Don't be trying to tell me that we should have this built or that built. Don't tell us. 
Well, well, let me tell you this is typical of Ian Paisley changing the subject again. Mister, you butt out of it. Right, right. Well, let's talk about, let's talk about briefly, John Hume, what Ian Paisley is getting at. He is saying about the free trips. We are talking about the council junkets. Um, a lot of Belfast City councillors were taking trips at the ratepayers' expense. Is that right, Mr Hume? Well, I thought it was a fucking disgrace. These unionist councillors were jetting all over the world. While the best a nationalist councillor could hope for is a free fucking flight from Hoover. I think that was absolutely deplorable. Well, it's good to hear that some Fenians are actually buying Hoovers at last. But Mr Hume is talking through his horse again. He spends more time abroad than that woman out of the holiday show, John Dildo or John Dando or whatever her fucking name is. And if you're talking, Mr. Hume, about Sammy Wilson or Peter the Punt Robinson, and I said punt, I wouldn't mind paying an extra few pounds on my rates to send the pair of them in the orbit. One way, of course. Well, right, well, now, we want to get back onto the subject in question which we were talking about, which, of course, is the booming business in Northern Ireland. Finally, John B. McGugan, will there be more business, therefore more jobs? Well, I, I certainly hope so, because uh, these fucking Japanese are trying to take over, uh, and the worst about it is, when they get in, they'll, they'll bring their own yellow-faced fucking comrades over to do the work, and that means that they'll be doing us out of work, and uh, uh, if it comes to that, then we're going to have to go to Jerry Adams or someone to try and blow them out of fucking business, because we don't want them coming over and taking... Right, that's great, John McGugan. Thank you very much indeed for that there. Well, now, the next subject on our itinerary, of course, is Jerry Adams' visit to the South Africa. Right now, Jerry Adams, you went over to South Africa to meet Nelson Mandela. Why? Well, um, when the ceasefires came about, um, Sinn Féin and I pledged there would be no more shooting. The guns would be silenced. So I went over to South Africa to hire out 500 Zulus to bring back to Northern Ireland. So if the troubles had been started by Protestant paramilitaries, I would have sent in 500 Zulus with their spears. At least Sinn Féin IRA would have kept their promise of silent guns. Well, that's the biggest lot of fucking bollocks ever I've heard in my life. Well, whenever you met Nelson Mandela, what did he say to you? Well, I couldn't fucking make him out, to be honest with you. Um, well, maybe if he had been speaking South African Gaelic, You'd have made him out all right. Right, Ian Paisley, do you think Nelson Mandela had any influence on Jerry Adams whatsoever whenever he went over on this trip? Well, let me tell you this here. Uh, Mandela didn't have much of an influence on his wife, Winnie the Pooh, but Jerry Adams, being the leader of Sinn Féin IRA, I'm sure Nelson was up there to his black bollocks with Adams. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, he is the black provo of South Africa and is not welcome in Northern Ireland under any circumstances whatsoever. Right, well, Jerry Fitt, what do you think Jerry Adams got out of his trip to uh, South Africa? Well, he probably got AIDS, clap gonorrhea, fuck knows what else. Uh, I don't think he got that much out of it, to be honest with you. Right, well, that's for do Sir Patrick Mayhew. Do you think Mr Adams achieved anything out of his visit to uh, South Africa and Nelson Mandela? Well... I don't think the spare chuckers of South Africa knew who Mr. Adams was. They probably thought he was Jeff Capes on a diet, for all I know. And I really do think it was a waste of time. And probably the taxpayers' money as well. Right, well, John B. McGurkin, do you think Jerry Adams could go out to South Africa and bring some companies back home here to invest? Well, he could bring back uh, Armalis Crackle and he could bring back companies... I don't trust him nor those fucking niggers that steal the eye out of your head and come back with your fucking eyelash. Uh, what we want is good, strong manufacturers uh, that's going to work hard and have a good, steady workforce. I mean, we don't want a country overrun by spear chucking niggers. I'm sure Sir Patrick May, he would go along with that. Well, I don't want to be put in a position where I have to be truthful. But I do see that Mr. McGookin does have a, a very valid point. Right, well, that's fair enough. Uh, Jerry Adams, do you think... The South Africans should invest Northern Ireland. Did you say invest or invest? Um, I think the niggers, or sorry, I beg your pardon, the black uh, black workers uh, work harder than the whites. I have no objections 
two niggers, or beg your pardon, blacks, working here in Northern Ireland? Right, but I'm sure the people you represent wouldn't approve of coons taking their, or sorry, nigger, or blacks, sorry, taking their jobs. Um, not really, because each black would be working for a Catholic white, um, for something like a pound a day, uh, and that uh, would be including overtime. Right, John Hume, is that system going to work here? Providing I get a nigger, it probably would work. Um, providing the darkie is also a Catholic, I don't want a Protestant nigger. Well, that's fair enough. Jerry Fit, would you accept this idea? Well, I wouldn't worry about the nigger being a Catholic, so long as it was a woman. Yes, I think it's a good idea, but uh, I think a pound a day is fucking pushing it a bit like it's a bit much. Right, and finally, Ian Paisley, would this idea suit you, or would you be totally against it? Well, uh, uh, let me say this here uh, quite humorously, uh, Mr. Cole, if, uh, if, uh, if it was a female nigger, I would certainly be against her, all right. In more ways than one, I'd probably give her a pound a day. Uh, cash, that is. Right now, we want to talk about the rerouting of orange parades. Now, Jerry Adams, we want to move on here and talk about these orange parades, especially from the Lower Armour Road. The residents are going absolutely spare about them. So what is your views on this? Well, we, I and Sinn Féin, want all marches to be banned, um, no matter who it's for or what it's for, um, whether it's for the black, the blue or the green. At least we want them all rerouted, and we want it done as soon as possible. Right, well, Ian Paisley, what is your view on this rerouting? Well, let me say this here. Hold on, I get a fucking drink here. I'm absolutely famished. Let me say this here. I mean, I have to get plenty of that into that fucking glass. I have to laugh at Jerry Adams. He says ban all marches, no matter what it's for. But let me tell Mr. Adams... He's the first fucker out with his bin lid when it comes to the anniversaries of interment and any Sinn Féin protest marches that happens to take place. And let me say this here. He says that all Orangemen should be rerouted, but I think it's the residents of the Armour Road that should be rerouted down to Dublin where they belong as far as I'm concerned. All oh, right, well, that's a bit strong, Sir Patrick Mayhew. What's your view on this? Well, uh... On the rerouting of uh, Catholics down to the south of Ireland, well, I don't think that would be uh, possible. The House and Executive uh, don't do transfers as far apart as that. But let me say, uh, if there can be a compromise made, uh, that would be great. After all, what we do want is a safer route. You'll get a route up the arse if you're not careful, Mr. Mayhew, or Mayhem. Why should we break with tradition? Surely the residents of the Armour Road could go to Port Rice for the fucking day, for God's sake. Jerry Fit, what do you say about that suggestion? Well, uh, the last time I went to Port Rice on the 12th, I got my bollocks knocked in. Uh, by an orange man as well. Um, I just uh, think the people of the lower Armour Road will have to stand their ground. I wouldn't move out of my house for any fucker, I'll tell you that now. Well, let me tell you this here, Jerry. You weren't long moving when your house on the Antrim Road was being torched by your own lot. Isn't that right? Ah, but hold on, man. That's different. That was a that was a case of mistaken identity. They thought I was Seamus Mullen. Fuck's sake. No, no. That, uh, that's a different kettle of fish all together. Yeah. Now, we've, we've also had a couple of uh, special guests here tonight. One of them is Chris Eubank. Uh, now, Chris Eubank, you wouldn't be here only for the ceasefires. Now, you give up boxing and you didn't give it up uh, so long ago. And uh, you're thinking of coming to Northern Ireland to live because the ceasefire is here and it's readily available for everyone to come and live here, isn't that right? Yes, that is right. It is certainly a great country. Uh, now that we have the cessation of violence, I, I think it's uh, doing. Uh, uh, I think it's doing everyone very good. And uh, yes, I have been doing a bit of house hunting lately. Doing a bit of house hunting. Doing a bit of hole hunting, more like it. Let me tell you this here. I want to know where you're planning to live because, let me tell you this here, there's no way you're coming to live anywhere near Cypress Avenue, my lad. Well, let me say, let me say this, Mr. Paisley. I'm thinking of living at Malone Park. That is a very, they're, they're very nice houses. You're a bit better off living up the Falls Road. For fuck's sake, they don't like niggers at Malone Park. 
Excuse me, I'm not a nigger. I'm a negro. Look, when I say you're a nigger, you're a fucking nigger, you black bastard, all right? Now, don't argue with me. Right, Dr. Paisley, for fuck's sake. Hold on, I get a swallow of this shite. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, that's better now, that's better. Right now, Dr. Paisley, that, that is no way to talk to Chris Eubank. He's our guest tonight. Um, Jerry Adams, could you suggest somewhere safe for Chris Eubank to live? Yes, I can indeed. Um, if Chris wants to come, he can come up and live in the Andy Town Road, and uh, uh, we'll we'll all look after him. No thanks. Uh, I don't want the copper because I want to hold on to my wallet. You don't need to be so fucking cheeky, you yeah, thankless black bastard. I was only offering you accommodation and a safe house. Oh, is that right, Mister Adams? Which house is that now? Mr. Adams, you've had more houses than the fucking Cincinnati kid, for God's sake. What house is it you're talking about? Right now, Dr. Pizzi, never mind, because that's a, a, a security giveaway. You're not to hardly tell you that. Well, Chris, I'm sure you'll get sorted out with something. Uh, could you give me your views on this subject of rerouting marches? I know you're not uh, very familiar with the politics in Northern Ireland, but just give me your own opinion. Well, I really don't know what to say, because um, uh, I don't want to end up getting my bollocks knocked in. Uh, I don't know what to say. I don't know whose side to take. Well, I thought uh, Steve Collins already did that. Mind you, I wasn't too happy that a left footer knocked her bollocks in. But that's besides the point. Right now, Jerry Adams, I, I want to speak to you here. Uh, what have you got to say about that fight between Steve Collins and Chris Eubank? Well, us Catholics can show you prod how to fight and win. Uh, like you did in 1690, Mr. Adams. Right now, give it over. John Hume... Is there any chance of both sections of these communities sorting out their differences over these orange marches? Well, I think it's time, and it's up to Ian Paisley, to go and talk to his community and try and get them to reason. And that's the same for Mr. Adams. Uh, but quite frankly, I don't give a fuck what happens. I never won the Nobel Peace Prize. So as far as I'm concerned, you can all go and fuck the whole lot of you. Well, I don't think that's very nice. Jerry Fitt, could you find a solution to this? I couldn't find my fucking glasses in the morning, never made a solution. Well, why don't the orange men and the lower Ormer Road residents toss a coin to see if the orange men march or not? I'll toss you out of the fucking window, you wee bastard. What the hell do you think we're talking about here? Let me tell you this here, Mr. Fitt. We are talking about a, tra a tradition that goes back hundreds of years. We're not talking about tossing a coin to see you kicks off in a fucking football match, you goochie. Right, gentlemen, let's discuss punishment beatings now. There's been an awful lot of them about, and indeed there's been the odd shooting. Uh, Jerry Adams, your influence is much needed to get Republican beatings and shootings stopped. Why has it not been stopped? Um, well, I never told them to stop, that's why. And let me say, we have to police our own areas, because we don't have the confidence in the RUC. And uh, let me warn anybody who breaks the law in my estate, uh, they will get a warning shot to the back of the head. Uh, we will not take any prisoner. And um, it's just up to the individual to uh, behave himself. Well, that's fair enough. But, Mr. Adams, why are they still using bullets? Tell me this. Why, why are they shooting? Well, Mr. Cole, um, battery-operated drills are very expensive to buy. And uh, we don't have the luxury of having electric sockets attached to the entry walls. So the bullet comes into practice and uh, it's the only way to deal with them. Right, well that's fair enough. Sir Patrick Mayhew, or, well I don't mean it's fair enough, don't get me wrong, but I, I, I personally do think it is wrong. But Sir Patrick Mayhew, are punishment beatings on the increase or are they not? Yes, uh, unfortunately they are. And uh, the, the problem is that... Uh, People, all victims, may I say, uh, often uh, don't report these incidents to the RUC. 
Therefore, the perpetrators get away scot-free, and uh, what they should do is come forward uh, to the RUC and uh, give them any necessary information they possibly can. And that way we can try and apprehend uh, the uh, culprits that are carrying out uh, very vicious beatings indeed. Right, well, Jerry Fitt, do you go along with Sir Patrick Mayhew's views there, go to the police and report it to the RUC? No, I don't. Um, surely if uh, the victim does tell the RUC, the first thing the cops say is, you must have deserved it. So I don't see the point in telling the RUC, because you only go down there, tell them, and, and then you're going to end up getting your bollocks knocked in again. So I think uh, if you have done wrong, and you get a boot in the bollocks or whatever else, then accept it, because you shouldn't have done wrong in the first place. Right, well, Dr Paisley, do you agree with that? Well, I sometimes wonder myself why some of these people uh, get kneecapped. I'm sure it's not for nothing, uh, but I'm certainly not saying that I support it. But I'm sure the paramilitaries are not going around the streets of Belfast or other parts of Northern Ireland to see who's got a nice set of knees for dismantle. Uh, these chaps, uh, obviously, get into trouble breaking into houses, uh, raping and pilfering and whatever else they're doing, and uh, therefore they, they, they deserve sometimes what they get, although I don't support it. Right, well, Dr. Pizzi, how, how do you think these beatings should be stopped? What do you think should, I mean, what do you think should be done to stop them? Well, that's uh, a million-dollar question. I think you better ask uh, uh, Jerry Adams of this world that particular question. Well, I don't think it's going to stop. Um, it will uh, continue. And I envisage an increase. And, Mr. Cole, can I appeal on your program um, to the following people uh, to be in their houses tonight at 9 o'clock? Um, Patrick McStavish, Jerry Weldon, and Finbar McConaughey. Uh, those three chaps will be receiving a visit tonight, so they will, at nine o'clock. Are they going to get a beating tonight, Jerry Adams? Well, they owe the Republican movement uh, five pound each in dues, and if they don't have it, they may well get a beating. Well, I take it, uh, I take it would only be a light wrap over the knuckles for the sake of a fiver. Well, if you class a bullet in the side of the head as a light wrap over the knuckles, um, I think you and I have a different outlook in life. But I, well, I think that's a bit ridiculous, Jerry Adams, that someone who doesn't pay their dues are in arrears of a five-pound note each and are going to get a round in the side of the head. I'd hate to see what would happen if they owed you a hundred pound each. Mr Adams, surely you'd want uh, all these beatings to stop before the visit of President Clinton. I take it you are looking forward to the visit. Um, indeed I am. Um, I hope the visit will help move the process forward and break the current impasse. Um, so you'll be, you'll, be t you'll be talking to him about baseball, will you? Well, why do you ask that? Well, well I believe the sport is very popular in Bally Murphy. I mean, that is judging by the number of people wandering around with baseball bats and so forth. I hope you're not trying to imply that Sinn Féin has anything to do with punishment beatings. No, not at all, Mr. Adams. I'm sure that, I'm sure that as president of the Sinn Féin or Sinn Féin, should I say, you'd have nothing to do with illegal activities. I was just wondering which team you'd support, the Andy Town ankle crushers or the Norglen kneecappers. Um, uh, I think we should draw a line here to this, Mr. Cole. Um, it's not helping to move the process forward. Right, well, Dr. Paisley, is it good news that President Clinton will be turning the Christmas tree on? Uh, certainly not. President Clinton couldn't turn his fucking wife on, never mind a silly tree, uh, 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 as far as I'm concerned. Right, well, well Jerry Fitt? Well, sure, anybody could put their finger on a switch. Jerry Adams? Yes, uh, even I could put my finger on a switch as well. A uh, fucking mercury tilt switch. Let me tell you this here, Mr. Adams. We all would know what you're about, we all know what you're at. Well, Dr. Paisley, I take it. I take it you wanted the Power Rangers to switch the lights on instead of President Clinton. Would that be right? Well, I don't know about... Hold on, I get the trick of this fucking buttermilk here. That's very strong stuff. I think I'll open this uh, tin of uh, Budweiser. 
Oh, yes, get it in there. Pour it in. Uh, well, I don't know about the Power Rangers putting the lights on. I wouldn't mind if Glasgow Rangers put them on. Uh, that would be very nice, and I like that. Jerry Adams, I'm sure you'd be totally against the, the Glasgow Rangers coming over and putting the lights on. Well, now that Rangers are out of Europe, I'm sure they'll have uh, plenty of time to do silly things like that. Uh, m Mr. Adams, any more of that and I'll knock your bollocks in. Well, you just can't seem to take the focus. Don't talk to me like that! I'll knock your bollocks in, you bastard! You're right, gentlemen, for fuck's sake, settle it. I'll knock his bollocks in, I... Right now, the next subject which we want to talk about is very close to everyone's heart and their mouths uh, in this country, which is drugs. It's become very, very serious in Northern Ireland. Well, I personally think so myself, because I caught the sun taking some of the toilets the other night there, and I near knocked us fucking. But anyway, we have a few of our politicians in here tonight to talk about this issue. Uh, Jerry Fitt, I mean, I want to know, is the problem as severe as the press and the media make out? Well, it is a severe problem, um... We can't get our fucking hands on them. Uh, no, seriously, it is bad and it's out of control. And I blame the paramilitaries because they are flogging drugs outside schools. Some drug traffickers have even been seen outside nurseries. And uh, then the RUC, they're making drugs raids one minute and fucking selling them the next. And I don't think the RUC are handing all the uh, drugs in. Um, uh, they're they're taking them themselves. I mean, I was stopped and strip searched outside the city hall. Fuck, that was a sight to behold. And uh, one of the RUC men was that high. He said to me, "Excuse me, love, you don't have big tits." So he was on something. I don't give a fuck what anybody was saying. Mind you, I mean I don't mind saying. I mean I've tried tablets before myself. I mean I took two A tablets, and uh, to be honest, they don't fuck all for me. Only cure my head. What do you what what do you mean A tablets, uh, Lord Fit? What may I ask are A tablets? Um, they're anodins. They're in uh, wee yellow packets. Are they? Are. Oh fuck right. Well, Sir Patrick Mayhew, is there evidence to support Jerry Fitz's accusations against the RUC? Are they true? Are they taking illegal drugs? Well, I uh, honestly don't think uh, Mister Fit knows what the fuck he's talking about. Uh, here, uh, the. There, there has been uh, no single uh, complaint brought against the IUC for drug taking. And uh, if he wants to see the files, he will certainly see the files. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, there has not been one single member of the IUC uh, brought to justice for taking illegal drugs, because there simply uh, is no foundation in that statement. Well, I have a friend whose house was raided, and the RUC took drugs then. When I say taking drugs, Mr. Adams, I mean consuming them, you silly bastard. I'm not talking about taking them away. Well, that's exactly what I mean, precisely. Um, they raided his house and then consumed the drugs there and then. I fucking seen it. Right, well, Ian Paisley, I take it you're very much against drug taking and all the rest of it. Uh, what do you say to that? Well, uh, it depends on the drug, uh, I mean, that is, uh, if it's cocaine, or it's e-tablets, or smack, uh, they, along with heroin, are very strong and dangerous narcotics. Uh, now, if you're talking about cannabis, I would say that uh, uh, cannabis should be legalised because of the comfort and the relaxation you get out of it. Well, obviously you've tried this, Dr. Paisley, have you? Well, never mind that. I think it's great. In fact, I think the City Hall should issue joints to all party members, except Sinn Féin, that is, before all our meetings. Then we might get a bit of sense out of them, instead of all the shite that they're coming out with every week in and week out. Uh, I think uh, every member should be supplied with a joint. I think you're not talking about bacon joints here either, Dr. Paisley. Now, Jerry Adams, uh, as a member of Sinn Féin, you know yourself, a member of Sinn Féin... From London Derry, I mean, we can't mention his name in case we get fucking sued left, right, and centre. But he was caught taking drugs. We'll not mention his name. But why was he on drugs? Tell us all that. Well, um, uh, obviously, that member was under pressure with his job. Um, carrying out knee cabins doesn't come easy. Um, so he had to uh, calm his nerves 
uh, by taking some um, uh, illegal drugs. Well, I'm sure the victim would have liked to have had some fucking dope also, because he got his fucking right leg done as well. But, right, as you know, our guest in tonight is Chris Eubank. Have you ever uh, dabbled in drugs, Chris? Certainly not. I think, uh, I think drugs is a real killer. And anyone who supplies them should get their bollocks knocked in. Well, let me tell you this here, Mr. Eubanker, Chris. By the sound of you, you've had a fucking ten deal down the back of your neck. You're talking like a wash machine, for God's sake. At least I'm not the width of a white machine. I'll kick your black stones up round your arse if you don't shut your monkey mouth. Don't speak to me like that, you black enamel batten rastard. Right, Dr. Pacey, for God's sake, give him a break. Don't think there's any need for that language. Right, gentlemen, John Hume, is the problem of drugs as bad as the press and the media make out? I've already asked that at the start of the programme. Is it as bad as all they make out to be? Well, I think there's a few in here taking drugs. Yes, I would say the problem has got out of hand. But some people say if the Lord Mayor's son can take them, then they can take them too. I personally don't touch them. I'm into wine, women and bondage. Mind you, I don't make a habit of getting photographs taken with women whipping my fat arsehole in front of pages uh, in a Sunday tabloid. I just get on with it, get on with the job and do it. I don't take drugs, I take women. All right, don't be fucking bumming and bragging to me. Right, well, Jerry Fit, should all drugs be banned? All illegal ones, that is. Well, uh, I, I'm going to get a fucking drink of this here uh, gin here. Oh, fuck, I, a bit strong out there. Because <coughs> it would be, there's no coke in it. Um, sorry about that, I didn't mean to be ignorant. Um, well, I think they all should be banned. I think they should be banned. Mind you, a lot of Belfast City councillors would miss them badly because a lot of them are taking all that sort of shit inside there and they're talking shit as well instead of talking shop. Ian Paisley, you accused Paul Daniels of uh, taking strong drugs. Why? Well, it's uh, very obvious. Uh, I'm sure you've read in the press reports and heard on the, the televisions. Uh, 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 for him to say that I wasn't a proper minister uh, is an insult. I mean, you can only but hear my religious overtones a mile off. And anybody uh, 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 that uh, knows me knows that I am a very religious minister. And uh, I am going to sue him and the papish BBC. I mean, I'll fucking wipe them out. I'll wipe the floor with his wig. Uh, uh, and I will not uh, tolerate him saying that I am not a minister. If he says I'm not a minister, he's not a fucking magician. Well, I'll tell you what, you'll need to be a magician to get out of this one. Not even David Copperfield could escape this one. And to add to that, Paul Daniels is a baldy wee bastard going out with a woman less than half his age. I just hope he has a healthy bank account, that's all I can say. Well, I see it's a very sore point for you, Dr. Paisley. Right now, we're going to move on again. Is the ceasefire paying dividends in Northern Ireland or is it not? Now, a lot of people will say that it's very obvious it is. Sir Patrick Mayhew, if I may come to you on this one first, is the ceasefire giving everyone their just desserts? Well, of course it is. I mean, many lives have been saved and uh, there's a lot of inward investment in Northern Ireland and the job prospect in Northern Ireland are looking very good indeed. Uh, the problem we do have is that people will lie on in their beds in the morning, uh, checking their chickens or giving it the five-knuckle shuffle or playing with Pam, instead of getting up and going out to find some work. Right, well, Ian Paisley, would you go along with uh, what he says? Well, I certainly don't give it the five-knuckle shuffle in the morning. Uh, Eileen does that. Uh, certainly not. Let me say this here. The trouble with the ceasefire is... Builders are going out of business because no one's blowing them up. Then we have the glazers who are not having to replace glass. They have lost contracts. And then we have the undertakers fucking yapping their heads up because there's no stiffs about. Except when Junior Walker and Sandy Blair are about. And then uh, 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 the price of houses is an absolute disgrace. I tried to move my son Ian Junior out of the house to get him to buy a house on the Newton Arts Road. 
A letter told me they have risen. Now, would you fucking hear this? They have risen from 15,000 pounds to 42,000 pounds. I had to ask him if he was on the right road. I thought he was at Malone Road. So as far as I'm concerned, the ceasefire ha has done a lot of people out of work. People cannot buy houses. And I don't think uh, 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 people are benefiting from the ceasefire. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Paisley, uh, for your comments there. Uh, well, Jerry Adams, is it all doom and gloom uh, for you with the ceasefire as concerned? Well, I'm allowed to talk for a start, um, which is good. Um, I also uh, have my visa to go wherever I want. Um, we, I and Sinn Féin, got border roads open again. Um, we got the army off the streets of Belfast, thank God. Uh, well, let me tell you this here, Mr. Adams, you'll not get the Protestants off the streets of Belfast, because that's what you're trying to fucking do, isn't it, you beardy bastard? I, I am not. I am not trying to do that. You're a lad, dirty rat. Don't be giving me that on your bollocks, said. Right, Mr. Pity, more than I fucking relax for good sake. Right, as I was saying, um, there are more demands uh, to be met by John Major and his band of cronies. And what are the rest of these demands then, Jerry Adams? What more are you seeking from the British government? Well, I and Sinn Féin want all television detector vans out of West Belfast by noon. Um, oh, I didn't know you Catholics had televisions, fuck's sake. That's a real luxury there, isn't it? Uh, as I was saying, shut up. Uh, I and Sinn Féin want Ulster bus changed to Irish bus. You shouldn't get buses at all, Mr. Adams. You're never done fucking burning them out, and you want the name changed? Don't talk a lot of bollocks. There's no way you're getting the names of buses changed. Right, now, continue on, Jerry Adams. Uh, Sinn Féin and I want the banning of all the Reverend William McRae CDs. They're fucking awful. Uh, we also want the Magic Roundabout. Uh, this is a very serious one. Uh, we want the Magic Roundabout translated in Gaelic. I personally want an increase in my dole money of £20 a week and I want it paid in punts and I want it backdated from 1972 if that is possible. Well, Jerry Adams, is there any more demands you think you're going to get or is there any more you want? And if these demands are not met, what is going to happen? Well, I think you better ask John Major and Patrick Mayhew that. Right now, we've come to the stage of the programme we have uh, mixed bag questions here for all our celebrities or politicians or whatever else in here tonight. Um, well, to change the subject, Mr Adams, could you explain to the viewers your party's policy on homosexuality? Well, I can tell you, John, that Sinn Féin is prepared to bend over backwards to accommodate gay people, and I mean that sincerely, folks. Right, well, I see. So Sinn Féin is seeking to take power with the ballot box in one hand and a sodomite in the other. Our gay will come, John. Right, well, that's fair enough. Right, Dr. Paisley, the Catholic Church is reading from allegations of sexual abuse made against several priests. Quite a few of them have had their clerical colours felt. Do you have anything to say on this matter? Can I tell you here, Mr. Cole? It's not their colours that these papist priests should be wearing back to front. It's their trousers. I am told there are now more priests in McGilligan than there is in the Vatican. Thank God there are no perverts in the Free Presbyterian Church. That's all I've got to say on that matter. Right, so you would agree that many priests seem to spend their Sundays praying on their knees and the rest of the week praying in children. Yes. Uh, well, old Red Sox said himself, the Pope that is, Young people of Ireland, I love you. I'm sure plenty of young people have kissed his ring, and we're not going to tell you what ring we're talking about here either. And what do you think, uh, Dr. Paisley, of Mr. Blair? Well, Mr. Blair is a fine, upstanding Christian politician, and a man of high moral principle, and I'm sure he'd make a fine Prime Minister. And what about his colleague, Councillor Jim Walker? Oh, you mean those two fuckwits from the Belfast City Council? Come, come, Dr. Paisley, weren't they only putting into practice DUP policy on bringing back corporal punishment, for God's sake? We all know what they're at. Let me tell you, Mr. Cole, I would no more trust Councillor Jim Walker 
with carrying out DUP policy, then I would trust O.J. Simpson with my Rhonda. Well, if O.J. Simpson was married to your Rhonda, Dr. Paisley, I think he would cut his own fucking throat. Right, now, let's change the subject slightly here. Should boxing be banned? Right, we have two retired boxers who are going to debate whether boxing should be banned with the internationally renowned peacemaker himself, Jerry Adams, who, of course, is here tonight. Uh, Barney McGuigan, surely boxing is a barbaric sport and it must be banned before more young men are killed. Uh, not at all, Mr. Cole. Uh, it provides... Uh, a disciplined outlet for people like me who had no other goal in life. You mean for people who are crap at racing, driving, hosting chat shows and growing moustaches. Turning to you, Chris Eubank, some unkind critics say that many of your opponents reminded them of Michael Angelo, that is. They spent most of their working life studying up at the ceiling. It's said that if you'd been awarded one more draw, you could have sent a claim in the Littlewoods pools. What do you say to that? Well, hold on a second. I don't regard myself as just another thick, working-class boxer, Mr. Cole. I'm a man of learning and culture. Right, well, that's okay. Well, here, hold on a minute. Who are you calling thick and arrogant, you wanker? At least I don't look like a cross between Sherlock Holmes and Princess Anne. If I were five stone heavier, I'd give you a good clout and a bait. Oh, hold on, Mr. McGuigan. As a student of psychology, I can see that you have an advanced, odious complex. An advanced audio... What the fuck are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, you're a thick little motherfucker. Right, now, hold on, gentlemen. Right, Jerry Adams, control the mirror. Right, now, let's draw the line under this. Um, it's time to declare a permanent cessation of violence. Um, it is essential that we have all inclusive negotiations and move the uh, process forward to all party talks, and the sooner the better. Jesus Christ, Jerry, I thought Chris Eubank could talk fluent bullshit until I heard you. Now give it over. Now, Jerry Adams, a lot of people would say that you are the main man in the IRA and that you are the IRA leader. Is that true? Um, if you don't withdraw that allegation, Mr Cole, I will be forced to take action. Indeed, Mr Adams, you and whose army? Well, watch yourself, John. They haven't gone away, you know. What, the piles from under your fucking arse?